Born in the East German city of Dresden to a family with footballing pedigree, Matthias Sammer spent his youth career at Dynamo, his local side. Still a teen, his father Claus gave him his senior debut in 1985, positioned as a striker. After being shifted out to the wing, Samer was redeployed in the centre of midfield, where he found his footing. While playing for Dresden, he enrolled into the Stasi Guards Regiment Felix E. Zerzhinsky, the security service of the German Democratic Republic, for three years from 1987. Though frail and slight framed in these early years, he was ambitious and driven to develop as a defensive player. The redhead laboured endlessly in the middle of the park and enticed other clubs with commanding performances for Dynamo. Having collected consecutive Uberliga titles with Dresden, Samer signed for VfB Stuttgart in 1990. Inside the two years he spent at the Neckar Stadion, Samer was integral to Stuttgart, scoring nine times on the road to lifting the first championship since German reunification. With Di Roten, the number eight became more and more comfortable in the midfield, intelligently reading the opposition and putting in tough challenges before driving the counter. The greater forces of Europe were alerted to the talents of the 24-year-old, and Internazionale offered him a chance to follow in the footsteps of his idol, Lothar Matthäus. The Nerazzurri welcomed the German just before the 1992-93 season began, and he excelled netting four goals in 11 Serie A matches. His tireless work rate and defensive acumen suited Calcio perfectly, quickly making him popular with fans. While he performed well on the pitch, Samer found issue with adapting to his new Italian lifestyle, and after six months in Milan, Inter lost their patience with the new signing, who had been pushing for a return to Germany. The owners eventually granted his wish, offloading him in the 1993 January transfer window to Borussia Dortmund. Following the winter, Samer bagged an impressive 10 goals from the remaining 17 fixtures of the campaign, still as their holding midfielder, a position that he would soon vacate. Die Borussen's manager, Upmar Hitzfeld, preferred a 3-5-2 layout with an extra centre-half, the German coach saw that Samer would suit the sweeper or libero role, as he was confident on the ball and had the endurance to patrol up and down the pitch. Made famous by Franz Beckenbauer, a libero sat between the centre-backs and goalkeeper as the deepest outfield player. Hitzfeld's choice was evidently a genius move, as Samer proved more than capable. Endlessly and effortlessly, winning aerial battles, tackling attackers before sweeping into the centre of the pitch. Foul-mouthed and competitive, he was nicknamed the Red Baron. From his deep role, he set the team in motion and controlled the Westphalien back line, proving hugely crucial in their 1994-95 Bundesliga run, culminating in finally lifting the title after a 32-year-long drought. Samer was the pulse of a solid Dortmund side, running everything from deep as the talismanic figure and earned the moniker Iron Matthias after once having a wound above his eyebrow stapled shut without anaesthetic during a match in Mönchengladbach. At the peak of their powers, BVB were able to defend their German title at the climax of a dominant run in the top flight. At 29, in his prime and determined as ever, the German footballer rated the best of the prior two years was the groundwork around which Bertie Vogts chose to build his national side for Euro 96. He held the libero role for Germany also, offered the freedom allotted with Dortmund, and after a quiet but triumphant group stage, the Nationalmannschaft met Croatia in the quarter-finals. Vatreni were spoiled for talent, and by no means a buy for the tenacious Germans. The Red Baron was an inspiration, rising above the physical aggression of the game and winning his nation a penalty 
for Jurgen Klinsmann to open the scoring. It's one nil to Germany. Despite their defensive resilience, Davor Šuka deadlocked the match again, prior to Samer's charge into the Croatian box, striking away the winner. He then returned to the back line and aided them in maintaining their lead for the lasting half an hour. A vengeful English outfit laid in wait for Nacional Elf, out for blood after elimination from Italia 90. Well matched and equally resolute, the fixture was extended to a shootout. 11 converted penalties down, Gareth Southgate's infamous miss secured the Germans a place in the final while the hosts were sent packing. At Wembley, Oliver Bierhoff rescued Die Mannschaft, having conceded a Czech penalty, and again inside 90 minutes, the Germans couldn't find a victorious goal. Early into extra time, the Udinese marksman drove the golden goal past Peter Kuba, securing Germany their third ever European Championship. Though Bierhoff and Klinsmann plundered most of the praise, Samer was the beating heart of the team and seemed untouchable throughout the competition. The Supreme Sweeper was named Player of the Tournament after a superb summer. At both club level and international, the Libero had been outstanding and garnered global acclaim as one of the finest performers that year. This was the zenith of Samer's career, typified in December by being awarded the Ballon d'Or However, his victory was met with controversy. The awardees chose him ahead of Alan Shearer and Ronaldo Nazario, the latter of whom received but one vote less than the German, prompting critics down the years to debate the decision. Undeniably, Ronaldo and Shearer were both ruthless marksmen who naturally attracted more attention for their goal scoring but the sweeper was a vital organ in successful sides that year, and true football fans would agree that 1996 was the year of the Red Baron. For Samer, more was to come. Though domestically, Bayern trumped Dortmund throughout their season, their European run was getting serious. Leaving their group with 13 points, they overcame Burgundy side Auxerre awaited by the Red Devils of Manchester. Alongside the mighty Jürgen Kohler, Ian Matthias kept the defence rigid, nullifying the efforts of Cantona and Cole to get two clean sheets across the legs. Their home and away goals qualified them for the Champions League final. Marcello Lippi's Juventus filled the other spot, boasting an extraordinary squad balanced from front to back with world beaters throughout, and were man to man a stronger side on paper than Dortmund. Alas, Hitzfeld's outfit continued to shine, outplaying the old lady in the first 45 and finding the back of the net twice. Samer, as the skipper on the Munich night, was the most influential player on the pitch, commanding Dortmund when on the back foot and barely putting a step wrong to keep the likes of Zinedine Zidane and Christian Vieri at bay. Laszlo Hamar's 90th minute whistle declared the West Germans champions of Europe for the first and as of 2022, the only time. The Red Baron lifted his sixth piece of silverware in a fruitful three year spell as the jewel of Dortmund during their most prosperous ever period. Shockingly, 1997 marked the end of Samer's time at the pinnacle of the sport, as in October, a standard knee operation was complicated by a bacterial infection, raising concerns of amputation as the required solution. Fortunately, this was avoided, and the 30-year-old left the medical centre still with both legs, but it was the catalyst for the premature end to his career which officially came in 1998. Resulting sadness flooded Dortmund, but the experienced Libero returned to Westfalen Stadion in the dugout as Beifau Bay's head coach in 2000. During the four years he spent as manager, Samer, at 34, 
became the youngest coach in top flight history to win the Bundesliga. In 2012, Bayern Munich welcomed him as their sporting director, with whom Bayern enjoyed a magnificent four-year journey of non-stop success. A big name of his era, Matthias Sammer is a heroic name in German football and a legend of Die Schwarzgelben. A talent with a brain, his tactical understanding of the game elevated him as much as his ability with the ball at his feet did. But Iron Matthias was also brave, an old-fashioned on-pitch warrior who put his all into the 90 minutes and wouldn't accept anything but first place. In his prime, as a libero, he quashed the talents of esteemed players and spurred on the counter, mirroring de Kaiser. Yet his global legacy is debatable. His is a name that has been somewhat cast into the shadows, due to his early retirement at 31 years old and success exclusively coming in Germany. Things change and the sport moves on but Matthias Samer was too good in recent memory to be anything but renowned. Still, for the modern age, he is truly a forgotten champion.